women lawyers, you are all to be congratulated for your professionalism, your perseverance, your perspicacity. At this point, I'm afraid though, I lose the alliteration, but I must add for your collegiality and your determination. Let me start with our wonderful Women Lawyers Association. WLA started with a small number of women lawyers who had few supports around them and even fewer supporters. Indeed, the ratio of detractors to supporters was a number which sat in a stratosphere outside all reasonable comprehension. Undaunted, they combined their intelligence, their skills and their sense of collegiality to become an association which, throughout its history, has not only understood the challenges for women in the profession, but has had vision, energy, fearlessness and adaptability, making it a respected organisation, not only within the legal profession, but in the wider institutional community of which law forms a part. It's that respect which has enabled it to be so effective in advocating for women in the profession and for having women lawyers' achievements recognised. WLA's Women Achievement Awards are inspiring. Inspiring because achievement should be recognised and must be celebrated. Inspiring because of the women lawyers whom the awards acknowledge. I wouldn't say that inspiration has been at a premium in the last two years. However, one of the challenges of these last couple of years has been fatigue. Fatigue that the issues that have affected women lawyers for far too long are still an issue. A fatigue that has been exacerbated by COVID-19. In this context, WLA is to be congratulated for not allowing its work and these awards to be deferred. All too often, to defer is to lose traction. The vision, energy and the adaptability of WLA has ensured that its work continues in relevance and impact. Likewise with the Achievement Awards, which ensure that the inspirational women of the profession are fated for their achievements. The awards for me this year are particularly special as I've been asked to announce the Life Achievement Award, which is to be awarded to an exceptional lawyer who I have known and admired over many years. Let me tell you just a little about Kate Eastman, SC. Kate Eastman, with particular expertise in constitutional law, employment and human rights law, is one of the most highly credentialed lawyers in this country. She holds a Master's of Law degree from University of Technology, Sydney, and a Master's of Law with distinction from University College, London. She has a Diploma of International Human Rights Law from the European University Institute, Florence. She teaches International Human Rights Law at UTS, Monash and Sydney, and is a visiting fellow at Western Sydney University. She's the only lawyer that I know personally, and as far as I know, one of only two Australian female lawyers, the other being Michelle Hannon, who leads Gilbert and Tobin's pro bono and SCR practice, to have travelled to Afghanistan. In the early 2000s, they engaged with Afghan female lawyers and judges in a program supported by UNIFEM. How inspirational for those lawyers and judges, and so inspiring for us here. For Kate, courage certainly comes into the equation. I can still remember her describing her experience when a stray hair or two peeked out from underneath the scarf she was wearing and she was spat upon by an Afghan man. In many ways, that summed up the reality of Afghan women which unfortunately is being played out again as we speak. Kate appears in every court in the land, on both sides of the record, for individuals, for government, for multinational and ASX 200 firms, and for the Human Rights Commission. Her cases are hard, and she often has to argue against the trend of the law, which has not easily accommodated human rights law into the greater body of common law and statutory law in this country. She's currently senior counsel, assisting the Royal Commission into violence, abuse, neglect and exploitation of people with disabilities. Her incisive intelligence, her logical mind, her knowledge of discrimination law and her understanding of how the law is intended to protect people made her the obvious choice for that role. Her opening statement to the Royal Commission is a model of clarity and focus and it should be compulsory reading in the bar course. She serves on the New South Wales Bar Council her name appears in the 2021-14th edition of Best Lawyers in Australia, in the 2021 Asia Pacific Australian Bar Legal 500 ranking, and she was a finalist in the Foremost Lawyer of the 21st Century. Now that's impressive. There are many other awards and accolades in Kate's firmament, too many to list. I've referred to her intelligence, her legal skills, her deep understanding of what discrimination is. 
There are, however, three characteristics which I suggest really sum her up. I've mentioned one already, courage. With that goes her humility and her graciousness. It's an honour to be a friend, and it will be a special honour to invest her with her Order of Australia, awarded in the Queen's Birthday Honours List. And it's a proud moment for me to announce the Life Achievement Award of the Women Lawyers Association of New South Wales, which is to be awarded to Kate Eastman, SC.